Well, hello, my friends. This is Steve from Amateur Hour Gaming, and today is day 45 of the 100 Day Challenge. As you can see, we are back on the block, and I'm loving this. I don't know how you guys are enjoying it, but I'm having a great time. However, I did make a mistake when I first tried to record this. You'll already notice a few changes, so let's run through them real quick. I managed to get out to my spawner, as you can see, I built a stairway, and got these things covered in torches, so hey, no more monster parties on the roof, which is excellent. As you can no doubt hear, our spawner is now working pretty well. And let's see what we can do about taking out one of these guys, just to test our theory. Can I hit them from here? I bet you I can. Oh no. No, no. No, no, that's, that's off. Okay, there we go. There we go. Actually, so in theory that works, but let's try something else. Let's put a slab there. Oh yeah, whoa, whoa! Now that creepster managed to see us, that's not what we want. So, but as you can see, this is this is definitely doing its job. We're having a great time here. Monster Party Central. I just want these creepers to see me. Oh, was that a carrot that I saw fly by? Awesome. Yeah, I should actually raise the floor one here, I think. And while ender pearls are nice, uh, I would be a lot safer, as I said, if I raised the floor, I think, so. Oh, oh my god, just look at the gems, XP gems. I hope I'm getting some bones, because I am definitely going to need the bone meal for any number of reasons. Now, of course, I can't get out, because I've got a slab there. Oh my god. Ooh, okay. So, uh, that's the end of that game. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Oh, can I not place a block there now? Excellent. Except that's not what I wanted either, so let's put one more in there. Oh my god, they're breaking down the house! Oh my god, this is not how I envisioned this intro going. Okay, I'm gonna get inside here, better or worse, and uh, die. But look, all my loot fell somewhere awesome, so that's good. And hey, respawn. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> that was a slightly different intro than I expected to do. So that's fine, I got five minutes till my stuff decays. What changed? I put torches on the roof, even though that doesn't seem to make a difference for that spider. I did get that one last tree to grow, got some string from it, which you can see from this inventory. No, all my string's sitting in the spawner. I got a bunch of string, which I used to make a bed, and I used to make an oak sieve. And uh, as you may or may not have been able to tell when I pinnated, I managed to pick up a bunch of ores and stuff as well. So we're just going to do a corpse run here. Unfortunately, the reason that... Oh, item magnet. I thank you. I thank you. Awesome. Uh, Wow, they really did a number on that. Well, luckily, nothing else should be able to spawn in here while we're doing this. So what I'm going to do is uh, do a quick repair job. I'm actually going to pause here. And that reminds me, the reason that you've seen these changes but you didn't actually get to watch them is that I thought I was pausing the video the last time I tried to record, and I wasn't. Uh, in fact, I stopped it. So for now, we're going to take a quick pause. I'm going to button all this up, and I will be right back, my friends. Okay, my friends, so we've done some quick repairs. And a modification. You can see I raised the floor level 1 on the mob spawner. This means I won't get Enderman, but I'm okay with that. However, this is an excellent opportunity to show you what I was talking about with Creepers. See how I hit this guy? And I hit him again. He can't make eye contact with me, so he can't blow up. Now, there is a bit of dodging necessary, because if they go back far enough, you see that guy could have a chance to see me. But, doing it this way is a bit slower, but no more holes. No more holes in the spawner. And that's really what I'm after, so... Oh my god, although he did get a peek at me. Also, uh, since you saw me fall off in the first episode, I definitely decided to... I definitely decided to put in some back walls and stuff. And, of course, if we wanted these guys to spawn a little quicker, we could just block this off, say, with some, you know, cobblestone fence or something. That should help, uh, help prevent the life from getting in there. So... Let us see. That is basically the changes. Like I said, made a bed, made a sieve, uh, pretty much took over my... <laughs> I took back the roof of my mob spawner, so no more parties, at least not parties that I don't get invited to. Of course, I'm going to need some more torches. Uh, guys are spawning on some of these blocks that I'm placing now that aren't very well illuminated, but that's okay. And really, that should be enough for safety's sake there. I don't envision having any reason to go really anywhere on the roof, but that's good. So, what are we doing today then? Okay, well the first thing that we're doing is trying to solve a problem that I created by myself for myself. Now you remember I told you my last tree grew, right? Well it did. 
I took one of the silkworms, which I have right there, put it in there, infected the leaves, and got a whole bunch of string, of which this is about half left over. However, when you infect a tree, it doesn't drop saplings, and I don't have saplings, as you can see. So that's quite unfortunate. I need another chest, but I don't have the wood for it. So, how do we solve that problem? Well, my friends, ex nihilo to the rescue. This sifter is awesome. Now, if you put dirt through it, well, you, you, you get all kinds of different items out of this stuff when you do it, but if you put dirt through this baby, you have a chance, like a 1% chance, to get seeds that will grow you oaks, spruce, or birch trees. If you put sand in it, you have a, like a 1.5% chance to get a seed that will get you a jungle tree okay now dirt's a pretty precious commodity I don't want to waste what little dirt I have here so basically what I'm gonna do is I am going to oh my god okay oh thank goodness I thought I was all out of sticks and wood I'm gonna spend all of my remaining wood to make sticks so that I can create a whole bunch of ex nilo hammers and clearly, I'm not going to make you guys watch me do this, but what I'm going to do is just take stacks of cobblestone and smash them down into gravel and then smash the gravel down into sand. And I'm going to sift that sand and uh, do that basically until I get a, a couple of jungle seeds so that I can have trees again. And then we'll move on to something else. Um, like I say, I'm certainly not going to make you guys watch me do that. I'll do it once just in case somebody hasn't seen the, uh, the first video so you have an idea of how this works. So there we go to gravel. You saw that hop into my inventory. And gravel to sand. Again, very quick. And if you wanted, you could take sand, break it down to dust. So this thing is actually working very quickly. The durability is pretty good on stone hammers, too. And as a consequence, or as a side effect, you see, we're going to get a bunch of, like, crushed and pulverized ores and stuff. That's fine. We will definitely make use of them. So for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause smash a whole bunch of cobblestone into sand, sift all that sand, and I'll come back when I have a jungle seed. Because once we have a jungle seed, the next thing we're going to do is make our nether portal. So let's, uh, let's look forward to that, eh? All right, my friends, apparently day 45 is the day that Steve forgets how to use the most basic software. This is the second time today that I have uh, had trouble with my recording. So, as you can see, we've made a lot of progress since I told you I was going to sift a bunch of sand and make a nether portal. But hey, nether portal. So yeah, let me give you the grand tour of what we accomplished. Uh, for starters, loots, lots of loots. Sifting all this sand and dust was uh, fantastic. You get all these great ores and stuff as a consequence. So really, at this point, like, we could almost start playing Minecraft the way you would in, uh, in a normal world. Uh, simply by having access to all these various ores, we can build just about any machine, any piece of technology, whatever we wanted. Uh, and that that's fantastic as far as I'm concerned. We hopped into the nether, which I will show you just for kicks. And because I'm a greedy McGreedy person, I uh, basically stripped it of all the available uh, glowstone that I could get my grubby little hands on. Uh, I'll come back out here and probably uh, build a small platform around this thing and build out into this absolutely beautiful red void. Uh, and probably like farm some pigmen, so and that'll be fun. Not that we really need the gold, but you know they drop armor and other interesting stuff as well. And you know I don't know it's XP, so why not? Uh, also, of course, from the uh, from the chest that we have in the Nether, which we used to make this a double chest, we also got a mushroom, a mushroom, and an ice block, which was key. Which was key because you remember that I put the first ice block into this igneous extruder and I can't get it out of there. <laughs> I just I just can't. I haven't figured it out. If you know how to do it, please tell me and that would be fantastic. But as far as I know, there's no getting it out once it's in there. So I don't have the ability to make infinite water. So in my sand sifting adventures as well, I did of course get an exotic seed. I don't have one to show you because there's only a one and a half percent chance of getting one and I went through like, what was it, two blocks of cobblestone, like three hammers, about 35 minutes and half of a latte that my lovely wife brought to me uh, in order to get it. So I'm not going to repeat that just to show you a seed. But here we go. We managed to get a bunch of jungle saplings and, um, well you got a birch sapling. 
from the chest in the nether as well, so that's nice. So I have expanded my tree farm, and as you can see, we're already getting exponential growth. I mean, from one seed to one sapling, you see we've got five here, four more there, and that is the power of this tool, the crook, right? It really ups your uh, sapling drop rate, which is fantastic, and yet another reason I love X Nilo. Obviously, I built out this big platform as well, and I used my first water block, or I used the, the block of ice from the nether to basically hydrate all this. Now, that had frozen at one point, which of course means that these lost their hydration. Now, that should never happen again. We're going to lose one farming block because of this torch, but that, in this biome, will keep this block from ever freezing back up again, which is good. This is what we want. Oh, is it because it snows on them? Okay, all right, geez, you learn something every day. Right, so if the snow falls on them, hmm, that sounds like a project to me. So maybe that's what we'll do before we leave, just to actually give you guys a bit more of a video here. But of course, what I built, as you can see from the tooltip here, is an aqueous accumulator. This thing is fantastic. Now, it hasn't actually been running very long, but this is a machine from... Uh, Thermal expansion, again, requires no power to do anything, which is awesome. And uh, the recipe wasn't terribly complicated. You have glass, iron for a bucket, a bit of tin. The machine frame is iron, gold, and more glass. And the pneumatic servo is, again, iron, glass, and one piece of redstone. Now, from sifting all of that sand, I'll show you, of course. From sifting all of that uh, sand, we obviously got a whole ton of ores, right? Like, I've got some crushed iron, i got some tin in here somewhere, etc. And then what you do is you put four of them in a crafting grid, and you get these sands, iron sand, gold sand, tin sand, etc. You get the point. And you just cook them. You cook them just like you would cook uh, ore that you dug out of the ground in a normal world. Uh, we also got some cactus seeds, which we don't need, but ancient spores, which are interesting. That would ha help us make mycelium, uh, which I'm not sure what we would use for, but I don't know, purple dirt? That might look cool. Oh, and I got cocoa beans. I got cocoa beans, so that's going to be fun. We make some cookies once our wheat gets going, and that'll be neat. But, uh, yeah, basically, so I just took advantage of all the resources I had available here and uh, very quickly managed to knock together the aqueous accumulator. The only difficult thing was getting the redstone, and you get that by sifting dust, which is one step further down the chain from sand. So you would just smash your sand again, get dust, sift it away, and boom, uh, get redstone. And I actually got super lucky. I think, like, the second piece of dust that I sifted got me a redstone, so that was great. So why did we do that? Well... Obviously, water matters. There's any number of uses for it. And I've effectively ruined my ability to make an infinite water source. So the aqueous accumulator is fantastic. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but I'll give you a quick breakdown. You put this baby in the ground, or you just place it anywhere, and it will suck water out of the air. Uh, the, the more water it is surrounded by, I believe, the faster it will work. Uh, two. Two is, pr is pretty much optimal. I mean, if you have a few more blocks of water around it or you put it in like a 9x9 nine nine pool, it'll probably work a little bit faster. But, uh, yeah, this is just like the Ignis Extruder. It just imitates Minecraft physics and creates water. And look, I mean, it was at 350 when I wandered over to show you uh, my treasure chest full of ores, and we're already almost up at 450. So every 1,000 millibuckets. Now, this thing will output to its top through pipes or, or uh, into a, a tank, I guess, if you wanted to do that. Uh, I think you can also just right-click it with a bucket. But we'll see. We'll see when we get there. So yeah, so I built an aqueous accumulator, got my farm started, uh, obviously expanded my platform, put up some walls, because until I put up those torches that you see there, if you can see my cursor, but sort of on the railing, I was getting skeletons and other stuff spawning over there, and I did not want to get shot in the face. And I'm very pleased to see this birch tree growing. I like birch. I think it's the nicest looking wood in Minecraft. Uh, very nice and creamy. It goes really well with um, spruce, I find. I think the most beautiful thing that I ever built is in a game that, God, I don't even have a save game for anymore. But I built this fantastic house just out of Bruce and spruce. Uh, Bruce? <laughs> Birch and spruce, even? And uh, absolutely loved it. It was my favorite home base for quite a long time. Why am I here? I need wood. Okay, well, let's go. Let's go knock down this tree. Let's see what we can do about... Oh, actually, no, you know what? I don't think we're going to do that. I think we're going to take advantage of our absolute uh, abundance of cobblestone. And we're going to use some cobblestone walls, uh, basically to be a fence post. And I'm just going to build a nice little enclosure so that the snow can't fall on top of our plants. Uh, maybe one more set of those. And at that point, we'll probably call that a day. 
I've uh, been happier recording, let's, let's put it that way. But hey, the 100 day challenge must go on, and you guys need content. A six and a half minute video will not do it. At least, I really hope it won't do it, because if it did, that would mean that you're bored by me. And really, you had to know me a little bit better before you're allowed to be bored by listening to me speak, so you have to tolerate a little bit for now. Here we go. Yeah, and this will be neat. It'll be a nice little, I don't know, stone pagoda looking thing, maybe? Oh, of course, you can't jump up onto a fence. What's I'm standing on? it? One, two, three? Can we get away with three? I don't know. Well, I won't take any damage from fall. Oh, <laughs> me and my big mouth. Yeah, I won't take any damage falling from three. One, two, three. Excellent. Uh, I'm not going to drop onto my crops because well, then they don't grow. Two, three. Uh, oh, did I, was I going four? Well, we'll find out soon enough. Oh, that's why, of course, because I was going four high. But hey, zombie brains will save us. And these guys, they're onto something. Refreshing, invigorating. Excellent for your teeth. Little known fact about zombie brains, actually. You know, because of the acid in your brain as it breaks down, uh, zombies have uh, fantastic teeth. I didn't know if you knew that, but uh, they do. They do. I mean, of course, it's covered in the grime and the muck and the mire from eating dead people. But if, if, if zombies could brush their teeth, you would, you would find out that, wow, just fantastic. So much better than I would expect from a, a dead man, you know. Absolutely. So while many things may go wrong in the skyblock, I won't lose my teeth. What do we got? Oh, a few more slabs, a few more slabs, and then we'll be there, and that'll be fantastic. And uh, if, my friends, you saw something of a nasty jump cut, or whatever between uh, me telling you that I was going to get sand, and coming back, and griping about the fact that I don't know how to hit the record button properly, uh, it's going to be because this will be the first time that I try to like cut footage together. Uh, for those that are interested, or uh, just willing to listen <laughs> for a few minutes while I fill the air while I make this roof. Uh, I don't really do a lot of editing, uh, as you may or may not have figured out. Um, I don't really have the time for that. Uh, Post-production would be fun, but at this, at this point in my life, I just I have time to sit down and play games and record them and talk to you while I do it, but I don't really have time for a lot of post-production. So what I do is I just run Bandicam. I mean, I paid for it. You don't see the watermark. And as far as I'm concerned, that was uh, an excellent investment. It's a good, uh, a very good program, very simple to use most days. And uh, I take effective use of the pause button, and that's the end of it. You know, I start, I pause if I think something's going to be boring, and uh, then I stop. And I actually find that to be really quite simple. Uh, I would definitely uh, suggest to anyone who, you know, like myself, is really just uh, getting started with uh, gameplay for YouTube and stuff, don't. Don't, uh, don't waste your time. Don't, uh, you know, put the cart before the horses, they say, or whatever. Like, start small. Get yourself a decent recording program. And you know, obviously learn to use it, but uh, but yeah, keep it simple. Keep it simple, right? I mean, uh, all the all the like you know fade to blacks and uh, interesting transitions and stuff that you can do. I mean, all that stuff's very cool, but I mean, really, that's gimmickry as well, uh, to be frank. And it doesn't matter how flashy your content is or how nice your intro is or, or whatever. Um, people will leave if they're not entertained. And uh, I would say, take your time. Uh, keep it, keep your programming simple, and work on uh, just work on your your skills. Work on you know work on your commentary. You can hear me um 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 as I'm doing this. I mean that's the point of the hundred day challenge, right? It's all about getting better at this kind of stuff and creating a better end product for you guys. And I guess having fun. I suppose I could have a little fun if no one was looking. But uh, I don't even know why I'm doing that. Actually, it just looks nice. But yeah, Bandicam, nice and simple. So, all that to say that if you see a jump cut or it's a bit choppy going between uh, edits, that's why. Because it'll be the first time in a very long time that I've actually edited anything. <laughs> so fun for that. So here we go. But yeah, look, look, I mean, like, we are actually making some serious progress. I mean, this isn't a bad little sky block. I mean, when we started this, what was it, like, a little L-shaped hunk of dirt in the sky, and I mean, now, God, we got a, we got Party Central over there, you know, even up on the roof in the summertime, we open the patio and take away the torches, so that's great, the Endermans love that, you know, we got a little tree farm going, we got access to the nether and pigment, all kinds of crazy stuff, we've dug a little deeper into the ex nilo tree, we've dug a little bit deeper into the uh, thermal expansion tree, uh, I think the next thing that we're going to do, which will be uh, tomorrow, 
is we're going to start with uh, Tinker's Construct. I absolutely love this mod. Um, it's all over. I mean, you know, Google it. There are videos everywhere and probably better tutorials than the one that I will make. But I'm definitely going to take you through uh, the basic setup for Tinker's Construct. Uh, I was just waiting on having enough wood because uh, there's a lot of workbenches and stuff you have to create, uh, patterns and the whatnot. But that'll all make sense tomorrow. And again, that's, that's, that's sort of my third favorite mod. Uh, in Minecraft, and really the point of playing the skyblock was to just sort of fool around and showcase uh, how much more interesting it can be if it's modded. And uh, those are basically the mods that I've chosen to run. I have a whole bunch more, but I won't take advantage of them, uh, so to speak, during our time here. So yeah, one, two, one, two, and we'll put a little stone step so we can get up in there. And there we go. Oh, we don't want to put a step there. Come on, Steve-o. How many do I have left? Excellent. Nice. Well, there we are, my friends. Uh, hopefully that'll do the trick and not prevent stuff from growing. But yeah, that'll stop the snow from, I don't know, dehydrating our water. Oh, he says as, the, as he finds snow. Well, that should be the last time that happens, let us hope. So there we are. I think we're, we're going to call it there. I've had a lot of fun playing. I've had a little less fun recording today. So I'm going to thank you guys for enduring and hanging out with me. Uh, once again, my name's Steve from Amateur Hour Gaming. This was day 45 of the 100 Day Challenge. And uh, I look forward to hanging out with you guys again tomorrow. Take care, my friends.